Hey there guys, I'm Sonic Ghost, and welcome back to some more Let's Play Banjo-Tooie. Last time we started to explore Cloud Cuckoo Land here, and we had ourselves a revisit with Canary Mary. She decided to come out from the mines and get herself up to the sky, in order for us to destroy her controller more, but we conquered it, and now that we're right next to where we finished the race with Canary Mary, we're gonna go ahead and use the transformation of this world right away. So let's pay Hubba here a visit. You have Globo. Want to give to Hubba? Yes, we do. Sure. I'll just throw it in. Magic ready. Jump in Wamba Pool. Yeah, this time I'm gonna do things a little fancy. Let's climb up her rafters here. And we actually wanna do this not just to be fancy with her jumps, because up here is a Jinjo. So there's another purple Jinjo. And now. Cannonball! Wumba, call this B. Press A to jump and A again when in air to fly. Use left stick to steer and press A to fly higher. Also, press LT or RT for stinger attack. Yeah, so this is actually a returning transformation from the original Banjo-Kazooie. This was the final transformation you got in the first game, and now this one's been souped up to have an attack. Although it's a little weird in terms of animation, because they just didn't even bother giving it an animation. It just kind of happens. So that's a little different. But the biggest thing is that we can go ahead and do with the B now, is we can go ahead and shoot these eyeballs, because now we can actually destroy them. Quick, you fool! Pass the jiggy on. So we can go ahead and do our bank turns here, just like we can normal flying, which really helps. But if you hold down the X button, you actually get a boost of speed. This is something that Hubba does not tell us, and I'm not sure why, because knowing this is a huge difference. This is so much better than just flying at the default speed. So make sure you hold down the X button if you actually want to move at a decent pace here. It makes a huge difference. But we want to go ahead and shoot all these different eyes, because as you can see, inside these eyeballs, there's a Jiggy that just keeps on getting passed around. So we want to destroy all these eyeballs so we can get access to this Jiggy. So let's go ahead and track down that eye next, and let's go ahead and shoot it up. Should be right around the corner here. Yep, right around this area. So let's go ahead and make a bank turn, and the eyeball should be right next to this giant hunk of cheese. There it is. Let's go ahead and shoot it, pop it open, and that's it. My rare Ibolius Jiggum plants. You killed them all. So once you destroy all the plants, you can go ahead and claim yourselves a Jiggy. So let's just go ahead and awkwardly aim down to the ground. There's no easy way to land here as the bee. You just have to basically hit ground and that cancels your flight. It's a little awkward, but again, hold down the X button to go fast. And if you're in first person mode and hold straight down, then that's another way you can land a little bit easier, but it is kind of disorienting. So I do apologize if any of you guys at home start getting a little ill with me just trying to land as a bee. Not much I can really do to help that, unfortunately. So what we want to do is we want to go ahead and shoot this target, but I want to shoot it far away. That way, we make things a little bit easier to hit this thing multiple times. Now shoot this lots of times. So we need to shoot this thing multiple times, and this is why I backed up to a very far distance, because as you can see, we only have a couple seconds to shoot it. Nice shooting when I come inside. So by hitting a bunch of bullseyes all in a very short amount of time, we're allowed to enter this giant little mountain here, and we got this tiny little bee hole we can go ahead and fly into. So just carefully maneuver our way inside, and there we go. Greetings. As you can see, we Zubas have a new nest. To celebrate, we arrange a little shooting game. If you score 40 points or more, we'll give you a prize. Manage to beat 50 points, then there's an extra special prize for you. Do you need any instructions? Luckily, we don't need instructions, because we know how this goes. Ready? Three, two, one, go. So this is like basically every other shooting game we played at this point. There's gonna be three different tiers of enemies we can go ahead and shoot. Red ones are worth one point, green ones are worth two, and blue ones are worth three. 
So the easiest thing to do in this mode is go in the first person and just rapid fire while also holding down either the R button on the N64 version or one of the bumpers on the 360 version. So that's what I'm gonna be doing here and just basically doing a bunch of U-turns, shooting things as fast as possible. If you have the homing sheet thanks to stop and swap, this makes this game a lot easier as well because homing in with your shots makes this so much easier. So this is gonna be a very easy game and as you can see, we already have 50 points, so. At this point in the game, we're just basically trying to play for a high score. There's no purpose to keep on shooting. I don't want to just see how many points we can get before the timer runs out. So just keep on shooting it up. I don't know which one I hit, but I hit something. Just keep on shooting here. Just got a couple more seconds left. And with that, we are done with the game. 74 points, not bad. Nice shooting. You scored enough to win second prize. Amazing! You also got enough to win the first prize, too. So there you go. We got enough points to get both prizes at once, so now all we gotta do is figure out where the heck these prizes spawn in relation to us. And let's just do a careful landing here. Nice shadow. No animation, just... flat PNG. Do you want to play again? Nah, I'm good. There's no reason to play at this point because there's nothing else here. And now with that done, that's everything the bee can do. So, let's make our way back over to Wumba's hut here and transform back into Banjo-Kazooie. And at this point, this is it. The bee was our final transformation of the game. So at this point, we are done with Hubba Services. You've served us well throughout our adventure. But for now, let's just transform back into Banjo-Kazooie and bid you adieu. Alright, so now with that done, let's go ahead and explore more Cuckoo Land. So, over here is another flower we can go ahead and jump into. And this one will shoot us back over into more of the central portion of Cuckoo Land. So, we're going over into the green section, as I like to call it. It's best to kind of color coordinate your areas. As you can see, every single area is colored differently. So, keep that in mind when you're playing this world, because that will definitely make it a much easier time for you to keep track of where you've been and what you've done. It really helps this world is all color coordinated. So let's just go ahead and make our way over here in particular to the sausage man apparently, thanks. I was gonna say make our way over to this ledge where the sign is because we wanna jump up here and see what the sign has to say. Have you looked in the pool yet? Not yet, what's in the pool? Oh, a Globo. Thanks, sign. I appreciate it. Instead of swimming all the way down there, let's just go ahead and use our Kazooie little move here. and Just separate her, use her as a torpedo, and grab ourselves our good old Globo. So there you go. There's that done. Now let's go ahead and jump down here and swim through this little cavern. Get ourselves some more notes. Now this one, this is going to be a short-lived little thing because we're not going to be down here for too long. We're gonna go ahead and separate Kazooie once again to her torpedo state, and let's go ahead and hit this rock. Doing so, we'll be draining all the water from this portion of Cloud Cuckoo Land and having it go out somewhere. And in particular, this is actually going down in the Pterodactyl Land and helping a friend that we met in that world, Dippy. Yippee! My pool's full of water! Where did it all come from? Mmm, tastes heavenly. Well, it did come from the clouds, Dippy. Did it? You said it wouldn't just drop from the sky. I lied. Just drink and be happy. Oh, I am. Here, take my odd-shaped gold tooth in exchange. So there you go, that's another Jiggy in our arsenal. In particular, that was one from Pterodactyl Land, so I do believe that was our final Jiggy for that world. So that's really good to know. But for now, since we helped out a good friend back in Pterodactyl Land, 
let's just make our way more into this world and see what other things we can go ahead and do. For now, I'm going to go ahead and just plow my way over to this trash can and in here, honeycomb piece. Can't believe I got that with just that one specific move. That was really insane. Wasn't expecting that. So in particular, I want to go ahead and fly around because I want to come up here over to this red ledge. I want to go ahead and just land. And up here, we want to be very careful. For starters, there's a note. But that's not why we're here. There's more notes up ahead because there's actually the treble cleft of this world just kind of sitting here. But you got to be extremely careful. And they are jerks about things up here since they put that B right in your line of sight. So take out the Zuba as fast as you can. But here, I want to go ahead and shoot a clockwork egg through this little hole. And over in this portion, we get ourselves another switch we can hit with the clockwork egg. Which activates yet another combination here to the safe. So, that's the whole reason why I wanted to come up here, but now let's just go ahead and get down there carefully. So, let's just go ahead and do our classical ground pound and then fall during the animation to take no fall damage. I love that technique so much. I wouldn't really call it much of a technique, it's more of a glitch, but it's a great glitch. It makes things so much easier, and that's why I don't really care about using the fallproof cheat, because you technically have a way to not take any damage at all, which is great to know, but... It's just still so good to use that move. Greetings, fleshy ones. Wow, a talking safe. Correct. I'm a super stash deluxe. Four digit, infinite combination, reinforced strong box. But four digits only give you 10,000 combinations. Hey, no one likes a wise guy. It's enough up here. Let's have a look inside then. Oh, that might be a problem. I seem to have forgotten my own combination. Perhaps they should have spent a little more on your intelligence chip. I know. Sorry, fleshy ones. But if you can find the combination, I'll gladly open up. So we'll have to keep that one in mind because as of right now, we only have pieces of the combination. We're already halfway there, which is pretty good to know, but we're only halfway. We need four digits in total, and yeah, we still have to find the other two. So we'll keep an eye out for those other two digits. That safe has been the one we've been giving those digits to this entire time, so now it's good to know that we have a face to our numbers. So here we want to go ahead and shoot a clockwork egg into this little portion of the wall, because coming over here is actually another combination for us to go ahead and unlock, so that was pretty easy. Combination just right above the safe. This one is not that hard really to figure out. You didn't even need to climb all the way over here too, because you can actually shoot a clockwork egg over to that ledge, and it will activate, so you don't even need to climb over a banjo. You can technically just get that with Kazooie by yourself, so that's good to know, but that's not what we did. I wanted to go ahead and get that with both the Baron Bird, just to show how you're supposed to do that natively. I'm going to be very careful with these enemies, because I hate the enemies in this world. They just pop out out of nowhere, it's really annoying to deal with that. So, got to be very careful where we walk in this area. They only show up here in the central cavern, though, so that's good to know, but it's still, these stupid enemies just kind of come out of the floor. Not the biggest fan. We want to go ahead and sit on this egg here, because this is actually a very interesting creature we go ahead and just hatch open. Wow, that's a rare Floatius Floatum creature, if I'm not mistaken. That's a very complicated and long name, but that's definitely an interesting creature that we can go ahead and utilize as Banjo. But for now, let's go ahead and jump up this ledge to get ourselves the last of the Black Jinjo family. So there you go. We got ourselves all the Jinjos in the Black Jinjo family, giving us another Jiggy. That's great to know. Now for now, I'm going to take these spring shoes. So I'm going to walk up this ledge here. Or I could fall. That works too. What I was trying to do is walk up the ledge with the spring shoes to get the most height out of my jump, but instead, I just kind of fell. So let's try this again. Walk up the ledge, carefully this time, and let's just jump as high as possible and use our glide move to get over into this little cutout, which is kind of difficult to get to, I'm not gonna lie. Really just Kazooie by herself can get to this by doing the method I just shown. But we wanna come over here, cause as you can see, we got ourselves an egg to hatch. So there's another one of those creatures set free. There is one more for us to go ahead and hatch, so let's go ahead and do so now with just Kazooie by herself. 
So let's go ahead and glide and since now we use the spring shoes, let's go ahead and use the other pair of shoes they put down here for us, the suction cups. So with these shoes, let's just go ahead and make our way over into this portion of the central cavern and climb up this wall, which is a pretty big climb up, I'm not gonna lie. This one wouldn't be able to get up here anytime soon with just like spring shoes, for example. But I want to grab that note real quick before we go ahead and move on. And right here, let's go ahead and sit on this egg once again and hatch it. So that'd be all three of the eggs all hatched up. So that is that. So now with that done, let's just go ahead and make our way back over to Banjo. Because now I want to go ahead and use Banjo for some stuff. So let's go ahead and fly down here very carefully. And let's just go ahead swap over to Banjo. And now with those eggs activated, I'm actually going to want to go ahead and use both of those creatures. So we'll go ahead and do so. I'll go ahead and use the one here in the central cavern in a bit because we will be coming back here. So we might as well just use that one once we make our way back into that area. It just make a lot of sense at that point. Because then as soon as we're done with it, we can just merge back with Kazooie. So here, as you can see, we take a lot of damage here and not the best. No easy way over there. So, I guess we're just doing this now. Sure, I actually kind of brain farted on that one. I forgot we actually need the move from this world, so please ignore. Worst part is, I practiced this world right before I started to record, too. So, that was a pretty big brain fart, if you ask me. It's fine. Get a little bit of some behind-the-scenes information on that one. Which makes me look even, well, more unpracticed than it should be. But hey, what does the sign say? Let's try to change that topic. Plant a seed, watch it grow. Up the beanstalk, you will go. Oh, interesting. Seeds and beanstalks. We got some seeds, so maybe they can become beanstalks. That's good to know, but more importantly, we got a move to learn. When faced by danger, jump on top. Now in the backpack, you can hop. Hold button LT and RT, and then press right stick up. Safely inside is where you'll be. That'll be all. Dismissed. That was a very disappointing attempt to rhyme there, Janjars, because what you just taught us was the final move in Banjo-Tooie. Now we know every single move for Banjo and Kazooie combined, and then with both of them separated. So there you go. And with this move, it's kind of an interesting one because basically he just taught us another way to get into our backpack because there's so many different ways for Banjo to get into his bag. But this one in particular allows us to jump into it like a sack. So we can use this to jump through these thorns now and we take no damage whatsoever. So well, that's very interesting to know. When you jump, you can also get an extra hop out of it too, which is kind of a good thing to know as well. You can use that extra hop to get some extra distance, so that's definitely helpful, but let's go ahead and put this little floatiest creature into our backpack so we can float all the way over here very slowly. I honestly don't know why they give you a timer with this section because the thing moves so slow. By the time you get over to the ledge you want to go ahead and jump onto anyways, you're basically out of time. So I'm not sure why the timer even exists. It's just kind of a weird thing to put there that just makes it a little more frustrating than it needs to be. I'm not exactly sure why, but sure. We'll just have the timer there. It's just fine. Take a little bit of fall damage, that's not really that big of a deal. I have more than enough health to survive it. So let's just go ahead and plant our second bean, which is located over here into this red section. So be very careful not to walk into a pop-up guy. Seriously, I hate these stupid creatures. They just come out of nowhere and they ruin your day. I don't like that. Stop popping up out of nowhere. So here, I'm going to go ahead and climb up this vine. And here, actually, I'm going to go ahead and jump inside of this flower. I want to shoot all the way over here, which is a very far distance. And doing so, we're right next to this trash can. That's a pretty big trash can. We were here earlier to get ourselves a honeycomb piece, but I want to come back into the, well, back section, because there's a little cutout hole we can go ahead and get inside of. Going to this little hole with Banjo, as we can see, we got ourselves another combination that we can go ahead and activate with a clockwork egg, so remember that for later. But more importantly, we want to come in here with Banjo, because we got ourselves a blue Jinjo, completing the blue Jinjo family. So there's another Jiggy, 
And that is that. I'm gonna jump down here and have a very weird falling animation. I got this can that's just kind of chilling here. Oh, it's me. Gonna be homeless soon. Homeless? What are you talking about? I guess I'm not allowed to really talk to you, so, uh, I'll wonder that question for eternity at this point. We got ourselves another Jinjo here, which is not a Jinjo, it's a Minjo. That's a thing. I'm actually surprised this guy's not actually talking to me. When you come in here a Banjo by himself? Ah, there it is. Hey, I didn't see you come in through the front door. Please leave and enter properly, like everyone else. Yeah, that's what that guy's supposed to say, and for some reason, he wasn't saying it right away. I was actually thinking I somehow skipped the dialogue, which would have been kind of confusing. I don't know how I would have skipped it, but that almost did happen. So I mainly just went in there for now just to get that Jinjo. We can't really get that that easily with Kazooie, so getting to Jinjo with Banjo by himself just makes a lot more sense. So that's what we did. So let's go ahead and climb up this vine here once again. And here I'm going to be very careful because I don't like the placement of the Zuba. This guy is in the worst spot, so I'm just going to take him out right away. I've had so many times where I'm trying to climb up this ledge, and that guy just swoops in out of nowhere, attacks me, and then I fall and die, and I have to come all the way back over here with Banjo. It's really annoying, and I'm not a fan of it. So, yeah, i got to be very careful, but at the same time, it's just kind of a luck thing where that guy goes, so just take out the bee right away. But there you go, another seed's planted. We can go ahead and use this guy to get back, or he can just disappear, because I do that after a while. We can get into his flyer, which will shoot us back over to the ledge we came from. Or we can also just jump down and fall. Ow, that's gotta hurt. All oh, is gonna hurt more once I land. Yeah, I actually meant to do that on purpose, because it's a quick warp back to get to our split-up pad. So there you go. Now we're done with that, and we have our beans all planted, and we learned our final move here in Banjo-Tooie. I'm actually going to go ahead and end it on that note. Next time on Let's Play Banjo-Tooie, we're actually going to go ahead and pay our good friend Mumbo a visit, and enlist his help here in Cloud Cuckoo Land. I'll see you guys next time.